Okay, so we're on our Christmas episode now. Uh, this is not going to be an episode that I'm looking forward to personally. But I know the Shove It Squad asked for this to happen again. Every Christmas I try and do this drinking game to TNA episodes. And every year it goes wrong and I get dumped or my window gets smashed. I had a brick thrown at me once. So it's not really something I'm looking forward to. But I do it for the squad, you know. So today... I had to go down the shops and decide what I'd be drinking today. And I wanted some Samuel Buka, but instead I got tequila, which I'm not too happy about in all honesty. It's not something I want to drink, but vodka wasn't an option either. And I went to two shops and at least I got this little green skull glass thing for shots. It doesn't even look like a full shot, but I think I need everything I can take at this point. I don't know how bad this drinking episode's going to be. I don't know what TNA episode's been chosen. Uh, shout out my boy who set all this up. So he's chosen the episode. I sent him three episodes of TNA. All I said to him was, choose the wackiest one. So hopefully he's not going to let us down in that respect. We've got some little drinking rules as well to help us with this drinking game. So the rules we've got today were sort of decided on by the community on YouTube. We've got... You must be drinking beer when Hogan and Bischoff are on screen. The Grey Crew. Now, when it comes to myself, I have to commentate as well. So I'm not going to be here chugging the whole time. I've got to, I've got to speak and narrate what's happening here. Especially because this is going to be turned into a YouTube video afterwards. So I'll drink what I can to these rules. Uh, the second rule is a shot when something dumb happens. Which is quite likely. I mean, it's, it, I guess it's down to your own jurisdiction if you think it's dumb. Um, I'm going to try and tell you if I think it's dumb and maybe go along with what I'm saying. We've also got a shot for a ref bump, which is incredibly likely given TNA. I'm pretty sure we've got 2010, 2011, one of, an episode for one of them years. So ref bumps were very common at this point. Uh, James Storm appears. You've got to be drinking beer. Drink however much you want. Just make sure you've got a beer in hand and you're chugging it. Number five is a double shot if someone turns heel. So hopefully that won't happen. Uh, number six is a shot for a DQ finish, which is also incredibly likely. And number seven is a shot of a wild slap nuts appears. Now, I don't know if slap nuts is in this episode or not. It's, it's not something I've decided on. I haven't viewed the episode. If he's not in the episode, I apologize, but... It's not my fault, right? You can complain to the guy who's running this channel. He chose the episode. Let's kick it off. Let's get this TNA episode started. Right, here we go. So Immortal are coming out. So get ready to drink, I guess, because Ric Flair's going to be there and Eric Bischoff's going to be there. Here we go. So Bischoff is on screen right now. So as stated by the very first rule, you must be drinking whenever Hogan and Bischoff are on the screen. I just hate seeing his long, greasy grey hair. Like, I'd love to just take a brick a pair of scissors and just smack the shit out of him then cut his hair off and just throw it over a bridge like just get rid of it this is bully ray when he was starting to get in better shape and he was starting to become a bigger deal in tna there's the idiot abyss so i think we're in that period now where there was a mystery network executive and bischoff is talking about if it's foley or not there always had to be someone in control of tna didn't there oh yes hogan's not going to appear thank god for that he's in new york I don't know if this is meant to be a low-key shot at the WWE because they keep talking about New York and obviously TNA is a southern-based wrestling fed. So anyone who gets in our way is going to pay the price, Bischoff says. Uh, then he's interrupted by some music. Uh, completely randomly, it is Brian Kendrick. <laughs> he looks like the biggest geek I've ever seen. He's got street clothes on and he's leading a team of geeks with him. <laughs> like, I, I, as much as I love Amazing Red, like th these guys could not look like bigger geeks if they tried. Red's got like, Red looks like he's got a pumpkin head with spikes coming out of the top. <laughs> it's actually a decent promo to be fair. It's got borderline shoot elements. Kendrick's going at Bischoff saying he killed WCW and all that stuff and they don't care about the X Division. Of course he doesn't. Oh, they're squaring up now. Okay, Eric Bischoff swears he's gonna wipe out the X Division tonight. Uh, he tried many times over the years, didn't he? <laughs> Kazarian. <laughs> Kazarian will be punished for Brian Kendrick being a dick. He's going to have to face the idiot Abyss tonight. Bischoff calls Amazing Red mildly moderate Red. <laughs> that actually made me laugh. But but then he repeats it again because he's so proud of his line. I have no idea what, he's, what Red's punishment was. I was talking over it. <laughs> 
He tells the uh, young bucks their dream is going to come true. Uh, they're going to be able to fight on a trampoline tonight. Whoever flips the furthest wins the title belts. <laughs> Bischoff says he's going to dress in his little karate uniform and he's going to beat up the young bucks tonight. I look forward to that. Kendrick is sulking because Bischoff hasn't put him in a match. Uh, Bischoff tells him that he's got something for him and then he slaps him. I don't know why this was so funny to me. There's a little massive fight going on, which we probably should have put in the drinking rules. If, if there's a big brawl going on in TNA, we should have probably drank to that because that happens three times a show. Oh, Bully Ray absolutely kills Amazing Red. No, Mildly Moderate Red. That's his name from now on, isn't it? Oh, here's here's Kazarian. He hasn't got any ladies with him this time. Who's that? Oh, it's, oh the Cowboy James Storm drink. That is a drink. You've got a drink of Storms on screen. So the Immortal guys basically kill... No, the Fortune guys kill the Immortal guys. Uh, Abyss is trying to wade his way down the ramp. But he's too big, too fat to make it, I guess. Ric Flair and James Storm are having a little shindig. Flair throws his uh, coat at Storm, which causes Storm to beat up Matt Hardy for some reason. Man, this brawl's going on for a while. James Storm's on screen. If he's on screen, you've got to be drinking. That's the rule. Someone in the comments says Abyss looks like he's drowning on land. <laughs> So after all that, Flair seems to be calling out Robert Rude. He wants a word with him, though. He wants a word with Rudy Rude. We've got six knockouts in action coming up tonight. And a strap-on match or something. Um, who's this, Sonata? Oh, it's the uh, surfer, surfer boy Sting. Here we go. So the uh, Mexican chicks are here. But only one of them's Mexican. And it ain't Sarita. She's a killer queen. She'll break your heart. She'll tear it in half. She's got a stupid crown. Okay, so those three chicks are taking on Mickey James, Tara, and Brooke Tessmucker. The knockouts division is actually all right at this point with the talent they got right here. Test marker's very green at this point. This is probably one of her first matches. I mean, I can't look it up because I'm live streaming right now, but I expect this is probably in her first 10 TNA matches for sure. Okay, they're about to fight, but the uh, the Mexican-American music's hitting. Anarchia. It's the cheap, cheesy version of Chavo Guerrero. Like, who came up with that name Anarchia as well? That is a horrible name for a wrestler. This guy looks like he could be like an undercover sex predator with those glasses on. They didn't do anything. I think they've gone on commentary. Man, Rosita's so tiny. I, I never thought Rosita would be able to do so well in wrestling. She is legitimately small. I'd be surprised if she's 4 foot 11, to be honest. I, she has her name on her ass, so you know who she is, at least. Distinct lack of blondes in this match, isn't there? You don't often get that. Uh, there's six brunettes in there. It's probably all the mold from the TNA locker room, probably infecting their hair. It's like the follicles in their hair is turning green and brown. I guess Tara's technically got red in her hair, I guess. There isn't much else to say during a match like this. There's just six random women smashing together. Why is Sarita the one who's getting isolated in this match? Oh, big elbow drop from Miss Tessmarker there for a one count. Oh, Rosita gets involved from the outside. Tessmarker gets smacked in the ass. And I think the Killer Queen is about to get in the ring. Here we go. She'll break your heart and tear it in half. This is actually uh, quite a distinctly long period I've not had to drink for, which is rare for one of these episodes. Tara's going to pick her up and hit the big time side slam. Bam! There it is. But no, Sarita breaks up the pin. She's got those thick legs. Uh, they're, they're like uh, small Toyota Yaris tires on her legs. Madison is dumping in a thong again. There can't be much left of that. She pushes her own partner, Rosita, into Tara, who hits her with the sit out. Spinebuster or Powerbomb, whatever it was. I didn't really, I wasn't looking to be honest. So it's over. So I don't think, based on the rules, that we have to drink anything to this match. There, there wasn't really anything that happened. Because Madison's already a heel, so it's not a turn. So Surfer Sting's still walking around backstage. I already know who this is. I've, I've seen way too much TNA to not know who this is. Oh, drink! Bischoff's on screen. Bischoff tells Abyss something. He says he's got to do something in this match. And Abyss is like, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll do I'll do whatever you tell me, sir. I'm your bitch. Do you know what? I think that should maybe be our first shot. Because 
I don't know, like Abyss has been stupid for a very long time at this point, so I don't know if it's actually stupid that you'd be saying yes sir to piss off. Like in in, ret in in hindsight, it's very stupid. I am gonna I am gonna have my first shot for that. It's up to you guys at home if you think that should be a drink, but personally I think when you've got a six foot eight monster saying to Bischoff, yes sir. Like I think that's very dumb. So we've got a nice little skull cup here. So this is actually an X Division title match. Because Abyss was in the X Division for a bit. He won the belt. Abyss is going through his uh, clothes that he got from a charity shop look. I don't, I don't know where one would acquire clothes which had holes and rips in them like he does. But maybe he was burnt. No, maybe. I don't know what happened to him. Like he just... He's practically a homeless person at this point. Like he's got mouldy hair and he's going bald. And he's not had a shower in forever. Uh, like, he's not even got teeth, for God's sake. So Abyss is waddling around the ring like he usually does. He misses his attack in the corner. And Kaz flattens him like a missile dropkick. He flies through the air. Like, the crowd chant X Division. I think. <laughs> Oh, there he goes again. Like, this guy just... He, he just looks dumb. Like, he tries to do the dive, dive in the corner again. He completely misses it. And then Abyss gets hit with the diving Huracarana. And then Taz starts smashing springboards everywhere. He's spamming them. Kaz reverses the choke slam into the pin. Just a two count, though. It was a nice try. Oh, he misses his little dive in the corner. And Abyss has got him. He's going to get him for up for the, the ball sack backbreaker. There it is. Like, that move for me, I, I honestly think that's Abyss's best move. Like, that move looks like it would have really hurt. Now Abyss is going to do a belly flop onto Kaz. Oh, but he misses. Abyss just kind of lands on his knees, and he's holding his knee like something out of Family Guy. That, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Look at him. Look, he looks so stupid. He's rolling around holding his knee. And, like, Abyss has bad knees, so why is he doing moves where he falls on his knees? Uh, it's his own fault. Kaz Zero's in it with his little pats on his leg. He's, he's trying to punch him, but it doesn't look very real. Abyss is really struggling here. I'm not sure if this is real or not at this point. Oh, no, he's fine. Abyss kicks Kaz in the gut, and he starts gritting his non-existent teeth. And he picks Kaz up, and there it is. Game over. Black hole slam. Okay, Abyss has won the X Division title at this point. So that's, that's official. That is a drink. Um, that... That falls under a shot for something stupid. Because, come on, like, it's Abyss winning the X Division title. Like, it's not a good thing, is it? Like, why would that be a good thing? And he's doing this really dumb gimmick at this point as well, where he quotes the book of Sun Tzu all the time, The Art of War. So Abyss is the X Division champion, 40 for all. All right, Amazing Red is in the ring. No, the... What was it? The mildly moderate red. <laughs> he literally looks like a pumpkin with spikes coming out of it. Oh, Samoan Joe is his opponent. So you'd think Samoan Joe versus Amazing Reg could be a good match. This feels like an X Division show or something so far. Samoan Joe isn't doing any strange gimmicks either. He hasn't got a hentai penis drawn on his face. He isn't being kidnapped by ninjas. He's not pale. He's just moderately obese. Normal Joe. He looks pissed off. That's what you expect from him, really. They show a little highlight package of all the things Joe used to do when he was awesome. And, and now he's not. He, right, ama amazing red charges straight at Joe and he hit with a urinagi straight away. Is RVD going to be on this show? Because I am properly in the mood to sing RVD's theme music. Like, I can do that all day, all night. There's no need to fight. I will sing it. Amazing red misses the trouble in paradise kick and then Joe has a kick for him of his own in the corner and this one could be over in record time because Joe looks like he's going for the rough muscle buster Samoan Joe has beat an amazing modly we're gonna have to downgrade him actually after that because Red has lost the match in about 20 seconds I can't believe amazing Red just lost in 30 seconds like this guy used to be like the main star on the show and amazing Red was like the highlight of the show like him and Jerry Lynn and Styles, you didn't miss their matches because they were great. Oh, so uh, Joe's beaten up on Amazing Red, but then 
Crimson, Crimson runs out and he starts rugby tackling him and punching Joe in his big head. No idea what these two have against each other. Like, maybe Joe's been eating Crimson's food and that's why Crimson's so skinny. I don't know what's happened to him. There's a big, big ass suplex there from Crimson and Joe bails from the ring. Look at the size of Joe's head. That looks like a small bus. Oh yeah, so Crimson is apparently Amazing Red's brother. I remember this now. Yeah, for like a month. And then they just dropped the storyline out of nowhere and forgot that Crimson was Amazing Red's brother. All right, tonight we have Matt Hardy and Eric Bischoff, the leader of the Grey Crew. Drink, by the way, because Bischoff's on the screen. And he takes on the Bucks of Glory. AJ Styles, when we come back from an advert break, is in a neck brace. He looks like the biggest dork I've ever seen. So out walks Tommy Dreamer. Yeah, so this was a feud between a... Uh, Amazing. Tommy Dreamer's dressed like a member of the Mafia for some reason. I have no idea why. Like, he's got a... Like, this is the best Tommy Dreamer has ever looked as an entire life. He's got a goatee, a beard. He's got dark glasses on. He's got his hair slipped back. Well, what's left of his hair anyway. He's got a little suit on. And he actually looks like a normal person here. I'm guessing he's meant to be a heel because he's not doing his little hardcore gimmick. AJ Styles looks in with disdain. These two men do not like each other. I distinctly remember a pay-per-view where I think Tommy Dreamer beat AJ Styles by pushing a fork in his eye. I don't know if that's happened yet because AJ has both of his eyes. <laughs> so AJ Styles reveals that he's in a neck brace because Tommy Dreamer gave him a pile driver for a table. They're really trying to put over this... Uh, new slogan from TNA, Wrestling Matters. Because they they were kind of lambasted for having so many promos back to back and they're here talking about Wrestling Matters during a promo segment, which is pretty stupid. <gasps> oh fuck. You know what that means, don't you? That's time for a shot. Christopher Daniels saves AJ Styles from the big bad Tommy Dreamer because this is 2011 and Tommy Dreamer is a bad boy. And then Bull Bully Ray rushes the ring and he smacks AJ Styles in the back of the head of his chain. So presumably that's not going to do his bad neck any good. This is still going on apparently. So Tommy Dreamer is now going to go for the pile driver. And he pulls up AJ's ugly jean. There we go. Oh, and, and that was a very brutal pile driver. Like you could almost see AJ's little meatball head bounce off the ramp. And, you know, he's going back to Georgia after that because he ain't going to be on TNA for a while. Oh, look, and we cut from that to Billy Corgan in the crowd. The Smashing Pumpkin is here. And he's here. He's fro foaming at the mouth. He's going absolutely nuts. He's cutting a promo about something. And this guy is going to smack someone. If they I should have probably listened to that. I had no idea who that man was. I, I've never seen that man before in my life. It wasn't actually Billy Corgan, but he was bold and he had a fat meatball head, so it was probably Billy Corgan. All right, Perk Angle's here. He looks really happy as well. Like, he... That is the happiest I've seen Perk Angle look in TNA. Perk Angle is so happy that he looks like the cat that got the cream. And I, I feel happy... I personally feel really happy that Kurt's really happy. Because the amount of stuff I've... I, I've probably made more Perk Angle videos than anyone else on YouTube at this point. And the amount of shit I have to sit through about this man's life. And to, just to see him smile at this point. You know, it brings a tear to my ass almost. So we're talking about China here, which is a pretty big deal. I guess this is just after the pay-per-view where... China was there with Kurt Angle's corner and they beat up Slapnuts and Karen Jarrett. So it's pretty cool to hear China shouted out. The crowd chant, that was awesome. So there you go. People hate on that match. But, you know, it was cool to see China again. I don't care what... I don't care how people spin shit. Like, it was really cool to see China again. Like, it wasn't a good match. No. But she's a star. And seeing a star on pay-per-view is what you want to see. So Kurt Angle asked Slapnuts if they can have... A match without Karen getting involved because she's been ruining like all the pay-per-view matches at this point. Bam! On pay-per-view, someone's ass is going to be tapping. And it's going to be you, Slappy. Here we go. Here he comes. You better line your shot up because... Is it a shot when we see Jeff? I can't remember what my own rules are. Yeah? A shot, number seven. A shot if Wild Slapnuts appears. So get your tequila out or whatever you're drinking. 
A wild slap nuts appears. Jeff Jarrett actually has a really good theme, doesn't he? Like, it's underrated. Like, there's a reason Jeff's used it for, like, the last 15 years. Jarrett's frantically cutting a promo whilst people in the crowd scream, You suck, Jarrett! And they sky sound passionate. Kurt goes nose to nose, which is never a good thing to TNA, because Kurt might headbutt him in a minute. You know what Kurt's like. Like, no one wants to hear slap nuts twice at the end of the day, do they? Like, we've heard him once. Like, we don't want to keep hearing Jeff Jarrett go, Well, you accept your challenge, Perakangle. Why? I will fight you in a perk on a pole match. Like, no one wants to hear that, do they? We've heard enough of this stuff. Jarrett looks like one of the Cabbage Patch kids. Like, his hair. His hair's all wavy like a cabbage. Kurt is still smiling. Like, he's a lovely guy at this point. Like, he's so happy to be spending time with his best friend, Jeff Jarrett. They, they shake hands. Is anyone going to smack anyone? They play Kurt Angle's music, but then they play Jeff Jarrett's music. Oh, no. A wild Karen Jarrett appears. Oh, she's in a wheelchair as well. Like, she's she's got this turquoise dress on, and she's in a wheelchair still. She look, She's trying to look really nice, bless her. Oh, Velvet Sky appears behind her. Velvet just steals the microphone. Like, why didn't she just push the wheelchair down the ramp without announcing herself? It would have been so much better. Oh, she is going to push the wheelchair now. It's Rocket Launcher. It's Rocket Launcher. It's Rocket Launcher. Three, two, one, in your face. Velvel's, like, imagine if OnlyFans existed in 2011. Like, Velvet Sky would, wouldn't need to be working at a sunglass. I know it was Taylor Wilde, but, like, let's be honest. Like, all these TNA people had second jobs because they paid so badly. But can you imagine how many simple people would be paying for, like, Velvet Sky's bath water? Or like dental floss that have been up her ass. Like everyone would be over that. Shout out uh, Gino Car in the chat room. He said she'd be earning more than Mandy Rose. Yeah, I'm with you, brother. So two two young bucks. Oh, drink. No, no time to explain. It's time to drink. He's still talking about the Hawkster being in New York. I think he's on the phone to him. I don't know. I wasn't listening. Like, I'm just mortified every time I see this man. Like he makes me feel physically sick. This motherfucker gets so he said, drink! Right. A wild slap nuts appears. That is a shot. Like, this is getting... This is ramping up now in the end game of this TNA episode. The drinking has increased substantially. Oh, so Ve Angelina Love and Winter are going to be on the show. The lesbian vampire killers are going to face Velvet Sky in a handicap match. So, uh, the, the, the stupid stuff's ramping up. I'm struggling to catch up here. Like, there's so much going on suddenly. Like, we went from nothing to something. These two people together. Like, why is cold-blooded Matt Hardy walking along with the leader of the Grey Crew? Look how intense he looks. He looks like he's about to fight Mr. McMahon on pay-per-view. Like, this motherfucker. Like, the grey hair is floating around the ring. You can feel the disdain for the Young Bucks. Like, he hates these two small guys. He's actually wider than the Young Bucks. And I believe that Bischoff could probably take one of them. Maybe not two of them, but he could take one of them. The Young Bucks get to face their hero in life, I guess. Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy's like winning. And then Jeremy Buck kicks Matt Hardy in the face. Do you know what? I really struggle with the Young Bucks names. And then I have to carefully think. So Matt Hardy has black hair. And Jeff Hardy has blonde hair. And I think that's how you figure it out. So I have to think every time which one is which. Because I don't watch modern wrestling. So I'm not like fluid with which one is Matt and which one is Nick Jackson. Like, I don't know which one is which. So if Bischoff wins this match, I think we pretty much have to drink. Like, he's... No matter what you think of the Bucks, Bischoff shouldn't probably be beating them. Bischoff doesn't want the tag. He's scared. Like, his grey hair was flapping around the room. Oh, there's a big frog splash from Jeremy Buck on the back of Matt Hardy. And it's just a two count. Referee Garrett Bischoff can only count the two count. He's waving his arms around. And he's got receding brown hairline. And he, he's got a little striped shirt on. He's a zebra, basically. Jeremy Buck tries the 450. He gets the knees to the GUT. But Matt Hardy don't give a fuck. And he puts on the ice pick submission hold. That's going to be game over now. Look at the intensity of Matt Hardy in this submission. I, I feel like I died watching that. Wait, what happened? What? Somehow that wasn't over. 
I think Bischoff wanted the tag. Oh, here we go. He's lining up. Is it is going to be a punch to the gut? Eric Bischoff. Oh, karate. Like that, that kick had zero effect. He does a second one to the gut. This is terrible. There's another one. Those kicks look like they did nothing. It's not three shots because we agreed the rules before the match. It only says one shot for something dumb. If you wanted it to be more, you should have said in the first place. I, I am tr I am truly one of those guys. I agree the rules in the first place. Hang on, this might be a double shot. I'm going to shut up. Can you imagine what kissing Angelina Love on those rubber duck lips would feel like? The whole storyline is fucking ridiculous. Like, she, she doesn't remember her life or something. So it's probably a double shot. You know, honestly. I never saw the appeal of Katie Lee Birchall. Like, she's got a blindfold on. Like, is that sexy? I don't know. I, I really don't know if a blindfold is sexy because it's not... It's not something I'd go for personally. So someone will have to tell me if a blindfold is sexy. It's not even a blindfold. It's like a sheer thing. She can see where she's going. It's going up Angelina and loves ass, by the way. Like, are these two actually in love for... I don't know. Here comes Velvet Sky. I'm going to do my second shot now. I was putting it off. I, I was probably talking too much. Do you know what the fucked up thing is? I've done about eight shots of tequila. No. Yeah, tequila. I've only drank two cans of beer. Like, the ratio is well off. So, when you see Velvet Sky and you've done leg day, it's kind of a thing. Velvet Sky wins the match. With a... I think it was a schoolboy. I didn't really look. But Angelina Love looks like she was the one who took it. Small package. Okay, there we go. Oh, shit. So, Velvet is jumped by ODB. <laughs> Mike Tanay says, what is that? ODB looks like the type of woman you'd see down Glastonbury High Street. But she's got that massive unwashed hair. No, I'm, I'm not talking about hair anymore. I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm doing this. I know what's behind this, though. Like, they did something where apparently ODB got, like, fired. And Jackie Moore got involved. And she got fired, too, because they didn't think she was as hot as Velvet Sky. And then they start a feud with Velvet Sky. I remember this. <laughs> Brooke Tessmarker is flipping out, saying... I don't have a photo shoot right now. You don't even have a camera. And it's Eric Young with his little TV title. Eric Young strips down to his... What brand knickers are they? Star Max? I don't know. Where are they from? TK Max? Walmart? Asda? I don't know. That's a drink. Eric Young tries to move on to talk about respect. Despite being his boxer shorts. Gonna smacks him one. I would have done the same thing. What is the main event of this? I've just realised, what is the main event of this show? Is there a main event? Does that mean Velvet Sky versus the lesbian zombie vampires was the main event? Do you know what really cringes me out? When people start bowing down to people at ringside. Like, do that. Like, and sometimes they do it to people who totally don't deserve it. And I just think, like, I would absolutely love to just smack you in the face right now. Like, you are the biggest geek, and you're on TV right now looking like a geek. Well, I think James Storm's about to come out, which will mean a drink if he does. No. It's just really rude. People ask me all the time why I call him Rudy Rude. So, when he was on a... Uh, doing job matches on Heat and Jacked and stuff, he went by the name Rudy Rude. Which is where I got his name from. Like, I'm not making this up. Like, he was genuinely called Rudy Rude on those shows. We've got this promo going on between Ric Flair and Rudy Rude. And Flair says that he helped James Storm and Rudy Rude get laid, which is pretty awesome. Like, the intensity and seriousness in this man's eyes, like, he looks at Rudy Rude like, this actually happened. Like, you have to believe it when you look at this guy. Like, he, Ric Flair, genuinely got Storm and Rude laid. People need to watch these promos. Because this thing doesn't exist anymore in current wrestling. And that's why no one's watching the show anymore. Because it's a shit show. This is a really good segment. Uh, Ric Flair is basically really running down Robert Roode to his face. He's getting in his face. He's slapping him. He's choking him. And obviously Roode was formerly a member of Stairs Stable. Like he was a little follower. Like Gunner looks fucking crazy. Like 
if I if I could like I'm a big gym guy. And if I could look like anyone, it'd be Gunner. Like, his body shape isn't too over the top. Like, he just looks strong as fuck. He looks like he could kill you. But he doesn't look like a... He doesn't look like Tess. Like, he's not, like, greasing with his roids. The icon stings here. What do people think of Sting in TNA? Like, what's the general consensus of Sting in TNA? I, I, I quite liked it. Like, for the first part of Sting in TNA, I just kind of... He 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 was really annoying for, like, a year. Like, 2010 on... 2010 to 2011, he was doing that whole... Oh, there's a conspiracy theory and Hulk Hogan taking over TNA. And he did eventually take over TNA. But after this, he gets fucking awesome, in my opinion. Like, his matches aren't awesome, but his, his character is 10 out of 10. Like, what, what, let the Hawk know what you think of Sting. All right, okay, no, back on subject. Anderson is here. He's dressed to surface Sting, and he hits the Scorpion Death Drop on skin. Sting. So we finished the episode. I'd be up for more. Like, I'm, I'm actually okay right now. It's probably caught a bottle of tequila, isn't it? Yeah. We're up to, we're up to there, so it's probably caught a bottle. So it's not that bad actually, like that episode wasn't that bad. So things weren't really going that badly. After two episodes of drinking, I was on my way, but nothing had been that bad so far. Little did I know, the third episode would essentially be TNA playing a bloody drinking game. I think it was a Thanksgiving episode and they were all drunk. Not my proudest moments. So I thought I'd just speed it up until the point where I lost the plot. Thanks a lot for that slappy. Eric Bischoff is on screen. Where are your table manners, brother? Thank you, uh, I can't tell you enough. When everybody's talking about you, you must be doing something good. And yes, last week. Please trick me. Oh, I won't. The Immortals. Whiskey for me and water for my horse. Oh, bad damn. The whole fucking show. Rob Van Dam, up some flow. Seriously. Oh my God. And I think I think it's time. It's time we. Oh shit! It's Jeff Hardy. Another miss. What they'll never be. I love it. I'm going back to Carolina. She can defeat the knockout champion. Oh, oh fucking hell, Jeff! Can I get a cheers? Oh, no. Cheers, cheers! Chop you, grey bastard! Yeah, Jared looks ready. Yeah, you better watch yourself today. We're stretching. The fact I have to watch that these ass green shorts, this Jesse Neal with this red mohawk, are shoving each other. And it just makes me angry, Am, to watch these two twats together. Because I don't want to watch either of these two. Four in the morning, watching Jeff Jarrett fight Jesse Neal. Like, could you think of a sadder life for anyone? No one wants to see these two guys fight each other. But instead, I have to watch these two in a submission match. Jeff Jarrett looks like, like he's got green shorts on. He looks like he was dumped in Ireland and then dumped his ass and left. Cause, and all he got left was the green. And Jesse Neal is the man with the mohawk. But he's the second half of a team no one cares about. No one wants to see him unless it's Shannon Moore. But that's that for three episodes. Are you drinking? Oh no, it's a ref up. That means a shot. As pissed off I, as I am, I have to do it. Like, I legitimately hate slap nuts at this point. Because... Do you not realise how much I have had to drink because Jeff Jarrett has appeared on screen. He's got receding hair and he doesn't do anything interesting. He's not had any good matches. He's just appeared and pissed me off. Jeff Jarrett, we will get you on an interview. I'm going to call you out on this shit because you've ruined my life. If this, if this guitar shot you look like you're about to land with Jesse Neal. That hits, I'm dumb. Because I am sick to the teeth. Spending my life watching F. Jarrett.
do is fucking bullshit. He didn't draw a dime. He broke a thousand guitars, didn't draw a dime. And I have to watch this. Do you know how many Jeff Jarrett watches I watched? Like, I have seen every single Jeff Jarrett TNA match. I know how many ref bumps there were. I can't remember right now because I'm drunk. But I did an entire video on Jeff Jarrett ref bumps. I have seen every Jeff Jarrett match. We've seen a ref bump here. You can cream Jeff you can cream Jesse Goddard or Jesse Neal, whatever his name is. You can cream with that guitar. It means I quit. So you've lost a viewer. Well, watch out, watch out. Ah Jeff smashes the guitar, does he? We'll watch this for a smash. You wanna see a smash? Over the head of Jesse Neal. Wow. The, I love these guys.